Hey yo everyone, welcome to an advanced builder's guide, interior design. Alrighty, welcome again. I know it's been a long wait for this video, but I'll get more into that at the end. Today, I'm going to be walking you all through and giving some tips on general decor, custom furniture, room layouts, design, and atmosphere. I'm using quite a few varying blocks in decor, so I won't be listing them all, I'll try and list them while I'm building. If you're wondering about what gear you should use while building, this list is composed of my suggested mods and gear to use while building. Most of this is preference, what you'd prefer is really up to you. Some people use and have suggested a few mods, which make building much easier. What I've created is basically a creative mode for recording, but I usually enjoy building in vanilla more when playing off camera. With all that said, I really hope this tutorial is helpful, so let's get started. Alrighty, the first thing I want to do before I go on to anything is get a general layout in our head of how we want the build to look. We have the rooms, which is definitely like nice. Usually I would do this before I start building, and I did with this one actually. So the bottom two rooms are going to be a waiting room and a bar, and the top two rooms are both going to be bedrooms. I don't have stairs in this house, but you'll see why. There's actually a cool technique I like to do for this kind of thing. It adds more character and depth to the build. So before we go on to furniture, we basically want to make sure the rooms are ready to add furniture, interior decor, interior design. So this room right here, I want to be a bar. But the problem is we have this really bright wall and this really bright base that makes the room seem kind of small. When you have bright colors, it makes the room seem smaller, I guess, because the brighter it is, the closer it is to the player, the darker it is, the further it is away from the player. So the first thing we're going to do for that is get a different wall. Right now, this is cheat sheet and this is the items list, items browser, and we're going to get wallpaper, which I like to use for these kind of things. We're gonna get Christmas tree wallpaper. Uh, I probably won't end up painting it because I like it just like this. Usually I would paint it, but for this video, we're just gonna leave it as is. I like the little pattern, even if it looks a little bit weird. Maybe after we're done, I'll go through and paint it, but for now, we got this all covered. And we're going to change the base down here to just regular gray. Just do a gray coat over that. And then right here, we're gonna leave that white just because that pops out more. And now that this is done, we're going to do our hallways. This is a cool design that I found out in a video I was doing a while back. I wanted to do a doorway and I stumbled upon silly green balloons. These are wonderful, an absolutely marvelous block. And I'm not sure where I want to have this, but I think this is a good place for it. So I don't like doing this next to any doors because I feel like it's weird. I like having a one block space in between. Anyway, for these doorways, which I get asked a lot, so I really hope this helps you guys. It's really simple. You take the silly green balloon blo blocks. We're going to get four. We're going to turn our actuation device on, and we're going to do one block above the player and then the two under those we're going to actuate them and then paint them with shadow paint so we're just gonna and then we just paint the wall behind it with shadow paint also sometimes i will take um fencing and i'll put it behind the door because it makes it brighter in the room you don't have to use as many lights so let's get more silly green balloon blocks and we're gonna turn the actuation device on and we're gonna figure out where we're gonna have this in these rooms I'm going to do one right here oops 
just like that. And then run right here in the center. Ugh, it's kind of hard when it's three blocks instead of four. So I'll just do it a couple places here I like it most. If we do it here, we can put something there, which would probably work out better. So we're gonna do that, and then, of course, I'm just gonna leave the shadow paint there. Paint all of this with shadow paint. So the wall behind it, and the blocks that we use to get that nice round top. Now, we get our teleporters. I don't do this in builds, usually, because most of the time they're just aesthetics. I don't plan to use them. I did hook them up in some builds, and it's very helpful. With um, T-Edit, you can actually furniture clip these, so you don't have to do this, but I like doing it this way if we're going to do it in vanilla. So we're going to place our teleporters with the actuation device on, and just like that, and then like that. So, yeah, it's not a three block space, but you'll see why that's not actually all that important. We are going to leave these as is, except, yeah, we want to do it like that. And then this one, we're going to, we can do it like that. I like to do it like that, so sloped, uh, I think it's bottom left. And we'll do that for each one. So we're going to actuate all of these teleporters. I'm sure you guys know how teleporters work. And... We're going to shadow paint the act the teleporters inside the doors, just like that. And then we're gonna paint these with either brown paint, whatever the wall is behind it. So this one's gonna be brown paint. These are both gray paint and everything. We can throw that teleporter out because we do not need it. Now we have these switches. So we got three rooms, or four rooms, three doors. Okay, well. How do we get to this room if this one hooks up to that one? We are going to have two switches, just like that, and then a switch in each of these doors, just like that. And it's pretty basic, uh, not too much to explain here. So now you can teleport to each one, and this one's kind of the hub. We're just gonna shadow paint these switches as well. And then, I guess, if you want to make an adventure map, you want some kind of indicator that there's switch switches. This is for your own personal world. It doesn't really matter. You know that there's switches there. But now we have an interactable house so far. <laughs> the way I'm going to do this is we're going to start off probably going room by room. The top two rooms we will do last. One thing to keep in mind is repetition. If you do, let's say, a basic bookshelf bookcase it's just a bookcase in one room and then you use like a boreal bookshelf in the other room unless there's a good reason for it to be there it'll probably look out of place you put a pearlwood bed in one room you're gonna want a pearlwood bed in the other rooms that kind of thing that being said we usually mix up tables and stuff because tables don't really have a general it doesn't really matter that much what I like to do for a bar is we're going to take these tables and then have it like this like that but i'm not sure we'll see what happens whatever happens happens i think we're going to do that just because i like it and if this feels awkward to you you can always get some kind of wall i didn't think of this before and i'm thinking of it now but we could get leaf wall and just put it like behind that block and under and just make it a little bit more comfortable. Make sure there's no wall behind it so that it blends better. And it still looks all right when the doors close. So now that we have the two tables down, I like using these for bars. We're going to get rich mahogany fence, which I'm not sure why I didn't have this in my inventory beforehand. We're gonna get that and put it on each end. So we already have it here, but we're gonna do it again. And, ooh. Since I actually don't want it all to be the same fence, and this is supposed to be behind the bar, we're going to go back to the fence and get some shade wood fence and put that in place of the other rich mahogany fence. And before we throw that out, we also want to put it on the other two inner ends of the tables. Yeah, tables, right. And then we're going to paint this with brown paint. 
and we're not going to paint the rest of it with brown paint. We are going to paint this with orange paint. I love using orange paint, and it took me a while to discover this, discover it, to find out about it, I don't know. Orange paint on wood, or other kind of blocks, is kind of like a different shade of brown. So when you do that, it still looks like brown, but it's just a different shade. Now that we have this, we're going to get... Why do I have that wall? What? Another wood, I guess. Another wood wall. I think just general wood wall is perfect. We're going to put that under there, and then we're going to paint these little brick... Oops. Brick wall with white paint. And right there, we have a bar. It's very simple. I usually do this for most of my bars because it pops out. It looks kind of like it would go in like it would curve I guess that's kind of what I'm thinking and that's gonna be our bar and that's where everything else is gonna come into place we're going to put the banquet table which is also a nice bar table if you're gonna do a pub or kind of that kind of thing and put it right in line with this beam because I think that looks I think it looks good and a candle on top just little aesthetics we're gonna use our bar stools on each end get a mug over here just little things things i like to use for a bar like this would probably be a keg mugs i'd usually like to take silver coins or gold coins kind of put them down like that what i like doing with the mugs is they can also look like salt and pepper containers if you paint them with white and black paint now we're going to get our wood shelf and put it right above where the keg is so the fencing and stuff fencing platforms and stuff don't mix into it and then we're gonna paint all of this with brown paint I like using the wood platform right here because it blends in with the ebon wood wall and looks kind of like it's a part of it almost and then we're gonna put our dynasty dishes maybe the vase or something like that and usually I'd paint the vase we're not gonna do that just that this is our basic bar money kind of looks like it belongs there it's just things that look like they belong in a bar even if they seem kind of out of place in terraria i'll usually put something down and go back and change it i liked where the mug is so we're gonna keep that the coin might look better there <laughs> and then our wine glass might look better there it's just stuff like that mess around with it do what you'd like whatever you're more comfortable with and then right here, it's not too much really to do. I think it looks good just like that. We're going to work on a light fixture now. Hmm. For the light fixture, we're going to get our brass shelves, put it right there, and take a steampunk candle, put that on top. It's kind of simple. And since we're doing it right here, we're also going to do it over here, just because I want to keep that repetition. If we do it in one spot, I want to do it in another spot. I don't want this to look too cluttered, so just getting the night, the right spacing for it is always good. This is hard because it connects to that, so having that one block space is again kind of important. What we could do here is put it above it so like a block above and then have it I like having it kind of like a mirror image so this is the line of reflection and these are the two reflection points so just like that now since we have this this empty space right here and it's very grayscale round scale there's not too much color I'm gonna get some pressure plates uh, maybe the green pressure plate or something and we're gonna put those down they don't do too much they're kind of to me I like to think of them as carpets they look kind of weird but it adds more color it makes the build seem a little bit more alive I don't know I like it mm, I like it whatever <laughs> this and then Oopsies, <laughs> what am I thinking? That, that kind of looks nice to me. But then we have 
this here and when we remove it it's it removes that so that's kind of hard we can always replace this with some kind of platform and hammer it into a stair kind of thing like that I like doing that sometimes but sometimes it just makes it look too weird yikes yikes it really depends on your preference maybe you'll just hammer it like that or something I like that and so I'm going to keep it even though I wasn't planning to do that anyway let's move on I think this is a good enough room you can do what you want with decorations I don't know if I give in enough tips one thing to think about is if you have a lot of wall space adding different things to fill up that wall space but not too much not that it's messy having this empty space in parts is always good because it helps the player to I don't know it's easier to look at it's clean we have this little shelf over here so we might as well add a little shelf over here just like that beautiful and we're going to put mug let's see if we can get our favorite book so that doesn't work unfortunately we're gonna put a book there I like using these <laughs> and a candle <laughs> why we have enough light sources a wine glass so just something like that that's our basic pub usually I would spend more time on these sometimes when I'm decorating I'll spend hours hours doing this but for now this is all we're gonna do and I'm not totally exaggerating when I say hours maybe an hour the old diner it's a build we did a while back I spent a good half hour just working on the diner while recording like the dining area and then another half hour off camera just working on it another thing that you can do if you'd like to you can't do this in game unless you have an older version of cheat sheet or if you have t-edit t-edit is a good way to do this but we're just going to remove the platforms under the candles that's usually what i like to do because to me this looks a lot nicer than having platforms underneath it i wasn't going to show this but i am showing this for those of you who want to get extreme into building and haven't thought of doing this before just removing platforms Underneath something like this is nice because it has a good rim on both ends of the candle. Before we move on, and before we're done on this, we're going to actually get some paint. Paint is a huge part in the build thing area. I don't know. For now, we're going to get our yellow paint, and we're going to paint these with yellow paint. It keeps that nice gray rim, but it makes this look more like a light fixture than it did before. We're going to paint our little vase with some, like we have red here, so we're going to go with green, maybe teal, maybe cyan, 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 I don't know, just like that. I think I'm going to go with lime paint, maybe. Yeah, I like lime better. It blends in with everything just a little bit more. We're also going to get, haha, I love doing this, I learned this trick and of doing the Christmas village we're going to get confetti midnight confetti wall we're gonna put that behind these little lights did I get rid of that we're just gonna use orange paint because we're lazy anyway nope we're gonna get our yellow paint actually perfect we're just gonna paint the midnight confetti wall behind the two candles and it looks like there's little electric bolts going through and it just makes it fit a little bit better so now that we are done with the bar we can move on to the living area hooray <laughs> i decided that there wasn't much to say here and i'd speed up this part and give you guys some tips while doing so while setting up furniture, I usually like to align the decor to beams and other parts of the structure. Furniture pieces I like for general rooms like this would be sofas, bookcases, any glass type object, candles, books, seaweed planters, 
planter boxes, banners, bar stools, and sometimes other nisculents. Really, whatever I'll find that fits the general theme of the room. I usually look for different objects that will complement the build and paint the ones that don't. When building, try to think of space proximity, and if there is one half of the room taking up all of the wall space, using paintings or shelves on the other room could help balance it out a bit, but still leaving enough space that it's not cluttered. If we were to do just green, per se, all of it would blend in, there wouldn't be a lot of contrast, and it'd be kind of difficult to look at, I think. So that's why we want to work on having a lot of different colors. If we have red, try using other colors that won't blend into the red too well, and then if we have brown, try to use colors that won't blend into the brown too much. Right here, this candle has kind of low contrast, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see this little golden rim and it's fine for me. But now we are going to move on to the bedrooms. For the bedrooms, we're going to use pearl wood since I think these look kind of old, kind of lived in. I like using them for an inn type build. We're gonna put a bed here, a bed here, and a bed right there. <laughs> we're gonna put a barrel right there. And then, what, maybe a bar stool right there. And another cool thing with the bar stools is getting paint. So let's say it has to be, doesn't have to be, it looks better with deep paint, so deep red paint. And we're gonna put that on these bar stools and it has that nice red cover. It kind of looks like a red towel or cloth going over the bar stool and it makes it look even more like a little coffee table. Now that we I have guess. this in, that adds a lot of color, which I really like for this build because so far it doesn't have a lot of color. So these bookshelves, which we might move down a block. One reason I love using um, T-Edit or Cheat Sheet is you can just do that. We're not going to do that <laughs> today. I'm trying to use really as little as possible for mods and tools and stuff. These are really just for the item browser and things you forget. It makes it a lot less stressful and helps you experiment more. Anyway, we're just gonna get Infinite Reach, which is also a cool tool, and put that there. Get these right there, and our wood platforms across there. Gonna paint all of this with our brown paint. Over here we're not going to do a shelf because we're going to put a painting. We're going to get our day bloom planters because they're kind of like pots and we're going to put them in these little empty divots just to kind of fill in some space. So right here I want to put probably a bookshelf or a dresser so we're going to put those right there. One thing that's cool with these if you want to, you can actually actuate them just like that. Oh, we're not going to leave it there because I like the contrast, the bright green against the dark brown. And we're probably going to put them like right there and right there. They're like little planter pots kind of thing. Another thing with deep red paint is getting, oops, <laughs> set my spawn point, getting the pots right here the clay plot the clay pots and painting those with deep red those are nice I like that it's kind of like your generic planter pot anyway moving on we're going to get a dresser so for stuff like this I'd like using the either the just dresser it's just called the dresser or a palm dresser, I like those. Sometimes the dynasty dresser, these are just unique ones. We're gonna use the dresser dresser <laughs> because I like how it blends in with everything a bit more. And then we're going to get a granite, I believe, a granite candelabra and put that right there. The cool thing, this is such an amazing 
item right here, and I love it. We can make this lamp look like so many different things. That's another thing I didn't really say, but I wanted to get into. Using weird objects to make different things depending on where you put it. So these platforms right here, they look kind of like carpets or rugs. Platforms. Pressure plates. My apologies. They look like a carpet or a rug. Just using something like that. Objects you wouldn't think would fit, you use them in a certain way that they look like something else than what they actually are. Some people won't see that, which is fine. It's really just depends on the builder. But anyway, that's where we take the candelabra. I like using this candelabra for a lot of different things. If we're just going to use it in a room like this, it's it's just going to be a lamp. <laughs> we're going to use a lot of paint for this. This is kind of this room finished. I don't like how it's too uh, short. It looks like it's all built on one line, because it is. So we're going to move that up a little bit higher. Sometimes I'll use dark platforms or shelves, kind of like the wood platforms, and I'll just kind of do that type thing. This room is basically finished. Color is a big thing, and I'll probably say that a lot. We're going to get a banner, because a lot of this is just to add more color. If it's all too much of one color, it's kind of boring to look at. The life looks more lived in and alive the more color you have. Over here, I had a music box. I did end up throwing it out because I wanted more space. Music boxes are great for a lot of different things, especially if you're furniture clipping. We're going to put a music box down, some books, This is going to be our light source for this room. If it's too dark, you can get gem spark wall and put it behind some of these things just to make it a little bit brighter. So like right here, right here in this door, maybe not that painting that probably wouldn't work, but just some gem spark. If you're going to use gem spark, you're probably going to want to use topaz or some other thing that'll emit a yellow or yeah, a yellow light instead of some other color. If it's white or red or blue, that'll probably look weird. <laughs> That's just me though. Oopsies, we have a light switch right there. There we go. And now when it's nighttime, that'll look a bit brighter. I should have thought about this room too. Oopsies, oh no. Now the doors still work and they kind of, they're brighter, I guess. It masks the teleporter light better. I could have done it down there, but we're, we're not gonna do that. We're moving on. And we're going to do a couple more of these light fixtures. Um, right on these lines, actually, not these lines. They are lines in building. If you were painting, they'd be considered just lines in the build. Vert nice vertical lines. These are Ebon, ebon wood. Ebon wood wall. We're just gonna do a couple more of those. A couple more on those. My bad. Can't speak. Oh well. I think this just about covers it. Things to keep in mind when you're doing your own interior design. Make sure you have a good layout that you're working on, a good theme. Try and use repetition. If you do one type of bed in one room, Try and use it in the other room. That's not always the case, but that sometimes helps. Try and have good spacing. Try not to have too much empty space, but try not to clutter it too much. I guess that's where organization comes in. Try and have it at least a bit organized. Using light and dark colors to make kind of a dimension feel in the build. So the darker the color is, the further it is away from the player, the lighter it is, the closer. And then the final thing, which I forgot to, I didn't forget, but I didn't really touch up on at all, 
is atmosphere trying to make a good scene and feeling in the build so right now i'm trying to make a pub that's also an inn i'm not sure if i did it too well but making it look kind of lived in i want to make it look comfy welcoming to travelers that kind of thing just making it comfortable this isn't my best work because i tried to do this quickly but it's just keeping those things in mind using your own custom furniture so let's say instead of using candles you can sometimes use stuff like flames platforms and chains or rope instead of using the bar you can use these tables fencing and wall but that is i guess it this is the build and hopefully it came out well enough hopefully this was helpful Hopefully this was inspiring enough and helps you work on your own. Whether it's the best or not, I'm not sure. Right now, I'm going to probably touch up this build a little bit, make it look nicer, spend a bit more time on it, and I will see you guys after that. And this is the finished build. Usually, at this point, I look over the build and make sure everything fits. Sometimes I'll wait a day, come back, and change up a few things when the mind is fresh it's much easier to see all the little mistakes once i finish up the general build i'd usually move on to natural decor trees and such but i'll save that for next time i want to thank you all very much for watching because i really do appreciate it i really appreciate all the support the first video of this series got i hope this video was just as or more helpful than the last I've learned a lot as an editor and a builder since then. The main reason it took me so long to get this video out has to do with me seeing how well the, other, the last vid did, but its quality wasn't all that great. It wasn't there for me, so it took me longer because I wanted to learn a bit more about editing and such before I did part two. And now that I've done that, I'm hoping to get into more tutorials if I get the inspiration for some, which also leads me to my next subject. If you guys have questions about building, editing, videos, if you have suggestions or ideas, make sure to let me know. I love hearing it from you guys because this community has just been awesome and what I learned from you guys and being a part of the community is the best way to grow. If you want to check out some of the other stuff I've been doing on the channel, I do some streaming on Twitch, post on a few different social media sites, we hang out on Discord a lot. We're also doing a few other series on the channel, we've been doing a lot of building series and a few Let's Plays. So make sure to check all of that out if you're interested, it would mean the world to me. Thank you all for watching, I will see you all next time. Peace.